One of the most common questions asked in the dental surgery is related to dental x-rays. Many patients are concerned about radiation, how often they should have them, the costs and why they need to be taken in the first place. In this video I want to shed some light on all things dental x-rays. Many patients want to limit dental x-rays because of fear of radiation. This is at times met with lack of understanding from the dentist and it could possibly set up a contentious appointment from the get-go. Proponents of the safety of modern x-rays tell us that the amount of radiation we are exposed to from a set of dental x-rays is less than spending a day in the sun with its emitting ionizing radiation. This is called background radiation. It sounds reasonable but receiving a full day's sun exposure in one-tenth of a second sounds like it could be problematic to any living tissue that happens to be in the path of its burst. When x-rays or ionizing radiation passes through the body, DNA can be directly damaged. Radiation can also cause electrons to be ejected from atoms, leaving behind positive ions or free radicals which can cause damage to DNA indirectly. This can possibly lead to cancer. The stronger the x-ray, the higher the exposure, the higher the risk. The exposure is measured in millisievert. To put radiation exposure into perspective, let's look at different medical x-ray applications and the values of their doses the exposure for an x-ray for the th thoracic spine is 1 millisievert. For the lumbar spine it's 2 millisievert. And for a mammography it's 0.4 millisievert. For a full body CT it's more than 10 millisievert. Dental radiation exposure produces the lowest amount in the medical field. Because your teeth are right next to your cheeks, the x-ray only needs to penetrate through that skin and through the tooth. So, compared to all other medical applications, dental x-rays create only a fraction of exposure and produces the lowest amount in the medical field. However, every exposure counts and adds up and dental x-rays should be kept to an absolute minimum. That said, dentists should be able to justify the importance of any x-ray. Dentists should not rely on a blanket policy on x-rays for all patients. My advice to any patient in doubt, ask the dentist. What specifically is he or she concerned about in your mouth that warrants x-rays? If it is a regular repeat x-ray, ask them to point out areas of concern. That might very well clarify any uncertainty. But now let's look at what kind of dental x-rays are typically taken in the dental office and why they are taken in the first place. Probably the most common routine x-rays are bite wing x-rays. Bite wings are taken to check for cavities in between your teeth, under old fillings and the bone levels. These areas are impossible to see with the naked eye. Periapical x-rays, which capture images of two to four teeth at a time, down to the root. Problems caused by any infection will show at the end of the root or the apex, hence the name periapical. Panoramic x-rays or OPGs provide a detailed image of all the teeth and the underlying bones in a single x-ray. They are extremely valuable to check for wisdom teeth infections gum disease, bone levels, cysts, abscesses or any other pathologies. This is a full mouth series which involves a whole set of both bite wings and periapical x-ray for each tooth, coming up to 18 single pictures multiplying the x-ray exposure. But why are dentists so adamant in prescribing dental x-rays? What makes it so important? The answer is that most dental problems are not visible with the naked eye alone. They can only be detected on an x-ray. Dentistry without x-rays is like flying blind. 
Dentists even refuse to treat patients without the information pertained from an x-ray, and for a good reason, because serious mistakes can be made by judging a dental condition without an x-ray. Let's look at some clinical examples. On the left we have a front tooth with a severe cavity below the gum line, causing severe toothache. On the right we have a lower front tooth with a chronic infection, because of a dead tooth. This could have turned into a serious abscess if left untreated. Again, both conditions were not visible by inspection alone. This is a bottom molar with a seemingly good filling that did not raise any suspicion by just looking at it. Taking a bite wing x-ray revealed a nasty cavity under the old filling that was about to cause a serious toothache. This bite wing x-ray is a very good example to show how cavities start developing between teeth. We zoom into the area of concern and have a look at the anatomy of a tooth. The tooth comes in three layers, the outside enamel, the center which is the nerve and in between the dentin. The red circle marks the beginning cavity between teeth. We see decalcification in the x-ray as a dark area. Decalcification is the precursor of a full-blown cavity. In this case it is limited within the enamel and has not penetrated into the second layer of the tooth, the dentin. On the top it's different. The decalcification has penetrated all the way through the enamel into the dentin and has caused a full-blown cavity. The tooth on the top requires a filling. The two teeth on the bottom can possibly remineralize with the right nutritious food and cleaning between teeth with dental floss. This bite wing is a good example to show how cavities start developing between teeth. One more example of a big hole that was undetectable and only be made visible with a bite wing x-ray. Here's an example of hidden problems in the mouth on an OPG. The two bottom wisdom teeth are severely impacted with the added problem of a cyst developing under one of them. The cyst is encroaching on the nerve canal. Generally speaking, most problems are hidden away between teeth, under old restorations or lurking in the bone. When it comes to dental x-rays, it's down to being exposed to some form of radiation or risking serious dental problems by overlooking them. Here's my approach. For a new patient, I thoroughly check teeth and mouth before recommending any x-rays. To establish a baseline, most new adult patients would benefit with two bite wing x-rays of their back teeth along with a panoramic x-rays and OPG. This gives me the opportunity and the security not to overlook any problems. And how often should adults get x-rays depends on their dental history. There is no general rule but as a rough guide I recommend to adults who are at high risk of cavities, decalcifications or gum disease, bite wings every 6 to 18 months and an OPG every 2 years. And adults with hardly any problems and good oral hygiene and diet bite wings every two to three years and an OPG every four years. Children whose cell divide quickly are more sensitive than adults to the harms of radiation, which makes regular x-rays for kids even more problematic. With children, any recommendations are harder because of that. On the other hand, it would be catastrophic to overlook serious cavities in baby teeth, as it is shown in this bite wing x-ray. Every patient's needs have to be evaluated individually and decisions are sometimes not easy to make. When it comes to dental problems, prevention is better than the cure. A good dental diet, nutritious food and meticulous oral hygiene will go a long way. I hope you enjoyed this video. On my website and on my YouTube channel I provide more information on important dental subjects. I also offer private online consultations or written reports for clients who feel the need to discuss their personal dental concerns. Thank you for watching.